Uh, welcome back. We're on round three of the uh, Metalwork Marathon. Um, hard tops, got those buttoned out first. That was the biggest job. Uh, windshield, we knocked that out, uh, so that was good. Uh, otherwise, everything on the front clip's done, so really all we're left with is these rear ambulance doors. Um, these were some spares I picked up that were, oddly enough, better than the ones we had. Um, but even still, they had quite a fair bit of extra ventilation. Um, you know, these ankle vents don't really need them back here. So we'll work on getting those buttoned up. Uh, patch panels did show up in the mail. So we're good. Got some materials to work with. Oh, wait a minute. Wrong channel. Um, patch panels actually did show up. Um, a company down in Illinois, I believe they're real steel, real steel cruiser parts. Uh, they've been starting to do some of these stamped parts. Um, the door inners are really the parts that are a little bit finicky. These outers are pretty simple. Could have cranked those out, but they sell them together. Um, but the, uh, there goes a heck of a tow truck. Uh, these inners have just a little bit of fiddliness that uh, by the time you go through all the work to crank that out, weld it up, you're just better off buying the stamped parts. Um, sucking it up, moving on. Got better things to do. Um, so hopefully these should work out pretty well. We'll see how the fitment is as we go. Um, pretty lenient on the back doors around the bottom there, so I think we should be able to make them work either way. Um, but those should do the job. Like you can see, they've got just a little bit of kind of interesting contours and things that um, that's all eaten out on these doors. So it's just easier to kind of bite off those patch panels, get them nibbled in. Um, it has been fun to do a little bit of the mix. Um, Hard tops, nobody makes patch panels for them. I'm not sure why. Um, these are gonna get a little bit harder to find, so my guess says we, which we will start seeing that stuff. Uh, but it was kind of a fun fun use case to do the work from sheet steel um, versus what it takes to do the patch panel. It gives you guys a little bit of a feel of both routes. Uh, these are gonna be the patch panel route. Um, so we'll get chipping away at those. Uh, first off, we're gonna have to find out the fit um, and then we can get cracking. Anyway, enough yakking, let's get to it. So before we get into the, the fun stuff, uh, just kind of good to take, take note of what we got. Uh, the door gaps are pretty good. Uh, sitting pretty square, been working them a little bit, trying to get as good as we can. There is a little bit of a wider gap up here uh, than down here, just a smidge. Um, but the hard top, from what I know, is square, so I think it is just a little bit of work on those hinges. Uh, but it is sitting pretty nice up here. Uh, this sits pretty even. Um, this is in just a little bit, but this is out just a little bit interesting. So I think there's a little bit of flex in my door too. Um, this side runs pretty good, kind of pretty even across the top. Uh, pretty good around here again, kind of the hard top wants to sit out just a smidge. Uh, but kind of the seam all along is pretty decent. Uh, the nice thing on this side is the spare tire sits here, so it's a little less noticeable if you've got some panel gap quirks. Um, so I like everything on this, it's a little bit of a game of compromise because you do need to get this to line up. Um, this, this rail meets up with this flange in the door. Um, and then the one that's probably most noticeable is this flange running across the back. Um, and it kind of meets up with its friend on the other side. So you can kind of work the panel gaps and get the door to sit straight, but then you might, you know, you might be off a little bit on this line or up here. Uh, so the most noticeable one is this center line, um, and then you can kind of work from there. Um, I think we're sitting pretty good. Uh, the other trick I use is these big welder's magnets. Uh, they actually help to have the door sit kind of where it would be. If you let it ride all the way in, uh, you do get different looking panel gaps um, than where it would be when you've got it running, even where the door strikers and weather strip would hold it. Because um, if you push it, if I take that, take that off, you can see the door sits in probably another good inch. Um, and that just throws all your dimensions off uh, when you're trying to adjust it. So those welding magnets work really good for that. Um, I used them on the front doors as well for the same job. And they're just handy in general. Um, but with those in, it is sitting pretty good. Um, that bottom could kick out just a little bit. Uh, but the real interesting part today is, so these sit pretty low. They're running right about even with that threshold. Um, got a few measurements. This is probably the closest reference point I have aside from just a general measurement. This side has been patched all the way across. So there's nothing really too useful there, even a little bit of brazing. So that's all gonna come off and there really isn't a great 
this is where it needs to go back to. Although that is about the height we're going to look for, so there should be a bit of a door gap there. Um, for whatever reason, this one's running a little bit low, um, but we can kind of work what looks right versus what OEM or what have you is. This is an aftermarket tub, um, Columbia, South America, HFS tub. Um, so there may be quirks. This is kind of a bit of a Franken cruiser because um, it's got that aftermarket South American tub and some South American doors um, that you just don't, you're not guaranteed to get exact fitment on any of that stuff. Um, so we're going to have to probably cut this off and kind of slowly slot that in and get what looks like a good door gap on the bottom and that's going to be our reference point. Um, it's better to have doors that look right on the vehicle they're going to go on than be kind of to spec and square and then don't fit. <laughs> um, you kind of got to work with what you got, do the best you can. Um, so let's get one of these doors popped off. We'll see which one we start with left or right. Not sure, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Um, get that popped off, start nibbling away. We'll probably have to throw it back on the, on the vehicle. Um, and then, like I say, we'll use that as a means to get that final outer panel fitment on. Um, likely we'll start with the inner, but let's get that door off, get it over on the, the bench and start cutting off the rust and see what we got to work with. Onward. So passenger side, got the lucky first slot. Um, as you can see, she's pretty chewy. Um, took the body hammer just to straighten this bottom flange out. It was a little bit warped. Didn't really matter. It's getting cut off anyway. Um, this is the patch panel on the front just for kind of give us some reference points. If I line it up along that end, we're not doing too bad. Uh, we may need to patch a little bit extra on this side. It goes up quite a way, um, but it gives us a little bit of a reference point if I uh, snag the old markaroo. Hey, it's still got a cap. Um, it at least gives us a rough idea of where we can go to. Um, it's nice to save as much as you can. Uh, but realistically, we're going to probably use that whole patch panel on this side. Uh, this other side, we may keep it a little bit lower. Um, depends what we need to work with behind. Um, it has this pinch seam. Um, so depending on how far you got to go up for that inner panel, uh, it's going to probably drive a little bit of how far up I decide to go on this side. Um, we'll put a mark just for reference. It is helpful. The old carpenter's crow's feet can be helpful as well when you're doing stuff just to know which side of the mark is reliable versus which side is garbage. Um, so you'll see me use those quite a bit. Oh. Yeah, taking a look at the back, she's a little bit rougher. Um, so we're going to have to nibble all this out. You can get a little better idea of kind of the all the curves and bends that made kind of making your own panel a little bit more of a pain. Um, this side's completely gone. And again, we'll kind of work that in. Looks good. Send it. Again, it's nice to keep as much metal as you can. Um, obviously, get as much of the thin, thin as you can get out. But again, we, this should go plenty far up on this side, the outer. Um, I think we'll have enough again, but we'll have to just keep nibbling back. This this far side here is the one that we're going a little bit further up. Where is that fella? And before we get too ahead of ourselves, that's a good enough reference point, 11 and 15 sixteenths basically to this ridge. Um, so as we work that other panel back in, um, that gives us at least a reference point. Nice to have some dimensions to work from even though we've got garbage here.
Again, I just measured a consistent line down. Uh, 11 inches happened to feel like a pretty good happy medium to get most of that rust out. Give me a decent flange to weld against and leave as much good metal as I can. Gets you out of the, kind of the where it starts to get a little bit pitted. Um, so we'll go there. We'll get at least that nibbled off. Probably just come down and whack that out. Um, and then we'll work our way up around the corner. Um, We'll have to kind of do a little bit of a decision around how far around to go here. Technically, you probably could leave this corner and just kind of work that bottom in. Uh, so we'll stay back a little bit here in case we want to save that pinch. Uh, it is different on these batch panels. You can see they're not quite the same. Um, so in theory, one could try and save that factory line if they really wanted that one. But uh, like I say, we'll stay back a little bit. Lovely. A little bit of a review into the guts. Um, so a little bit of surface rust kind of running up on the inner of this panel. Not super surprising. Um, Patch-wise, it's only going to go to this lip. There is a little bit of a, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit of a hole there. So it is thin right up to that lip, so that's going to be a little bit interesting. Uh, I'll grab the portable blaster, take her out in the driveway and clean that up so we've got a pretty good idea of what we're working with and get rid of that rust that's going on in there. Otherwise it's not too, too bad looking up the chute. Uh, this corner is going to have to get nibbled off. This is pretty solid to work from, so that's good. We'll keep chipping at it. Well, since we're working on this side, should probably move you on over here. Um, so it is rotted out to just before that line, which conveniently is about as far up as this patch panel goes. Um, so that's where this this line is a rough, rough guide for where we could cut. And then just the hedge is how to make this mating surface the easiest to work with. When you've got a straight edge here, it's fairly easy to take the, uh, the square and get a nice 45, which is a straight cut, um, and easy to measure and get that you know, kind of in the ballpark. Um, there's probably the easier way to do it. So if we take it here, Bring it on down, something like that. Um, that'll give us an easier one to kind of make in. 45s are a little annoying because when you shift around, they, they don't play real nice. A square might be easier. It's a little easier to trim with the grinder. Um, so that's the other play would be to be, you know, come down more like that and just call it a day. We'll see how much we can get this flange to flip up. Um, if we can leave it um, and work behind it, that would be nice. Um, it is a little bit crusty behind there, so we'll have to see what we're working with. Um, just trying to open that back up a little bit so we can tuck tuck this guy underneath and then have the seam be a little bit offset at least. Um, unfortunately, there is a bit of a spot weld just above there. Well, still kind of just nibbling away to see what we're working with. Uh, I'm going to take this corner off. Um, so I've got to get behind here, and you can see it's a little bit pitted. Um, using the die grinder, just it's kind of a little bit of a finer tool, um, so we can kind of just keep nibbling away, learn as we go without taking too much metal off. It's obviously the slower route, but it's a little bit safer, um, so we're going with that.
So working through this corner, uh, just to learn a little bit more around what, what sort of metal we're working with underneath, um, which will help us decide what we want to do on this uh, radius corner here. Unfortunately, it's kind of all or nothing there. The patch panel isn't going to match it up, um, so you've got to kind of choose. So I think we're going to end up cutting that all out because um, there is a bit of rot going on here um, where these pinches are. But at least we got a little better idea now. You can kind of start to see in. Better to go slow than uh, take too much right away. So back over to this side just to see what we need to nibble off this corner. Again, playing it conservative for a while. Kind of working this flange back where they pinched it. We're not looking terrible there. Uh, at least let me get that cleaned out. And this bottom corner would need to get nibbled off. And if we just came straight across, we could fold over that bottom. So that's not too, too bad. This is all pretty decent metal on this corner. Um, so theoretically, we could leave quite a bit of that. Which would be kind of nice. Just using a square to get a rough, rough line to keep nibbling this guy back a little bit. Again, just kind of slowly, slowly opening things up so we can see what we're working with. Um, I think it's going to have to come up a little bit more, um, but uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep getting there. Try to actually bring that up right away. Somewhere about there, perhaps. Thank. So this side should actually work out pretty good to come straight across on the face. Um, pretty solid here. Um, pretty decent on this side as well. Uh, this side we're going to have to figure out. You know, a nice transition there. But at least we've got a decent idea what we're working with. We can at least see. Oop, got to sneeze. Achoo! At least we can see better uh, on the back side of this corner flange. Uh, that was the main reason for nibbling this off. I did run it through the blaster uh, to get things cleaned up. We're going to have to drum it again uh, now that we've got a little more access. But all in all, cleaned up pretty good inside. Again, kind of the slow and steady wins the race kind of play. Um, if you cut off too much, uh, you're kind of putting metal back versus if you just keep nibbling away, you'll eventually get where you're going. Well, stood at it, stared at it, looked at it for a while with a carbonated beverage. Um, I think what we're going to do is nibble this corner off, work our way over. I think I'm going to leave this corner radius, save what I can in the original. Uh, this this angle is just a little bit different, so there's going to be some work to massage that in. So I'd rather just work that bottom flange, um, keep some factory metal, keep that nice original stamping. Um, that's the one that you're going to actually see the most. It's the passenger door that opens up, and it's the outer part of the door, not the inner part of the door. Um, outer being center. Um, it's the inside center. So when you swing the door open, uh, it is at least the most visible out of the four. Um, so I'm going to nibble this corner off, probably going to do this 45, um, we'll make that match up, then we can match up this line all the way across, um, then we can come down, cut this square, work this flange across. This corner is actually pretty stable, um, it's not perfect, it's got a little bit of pitting, but it's going to get hidden under that flange. Um, so I think that's the plan, better to do something than do nothing, so let's get cutting some of this off, start working that in. 
and see how she fits. So uh, kind of learn again as we go, um, but another probably good reason to nibble off and keep the other other corner. So if I set this one basically flush, um, or throw it up. So if I set this guy flush with the radius, uh, interestingly enough, this side sits long, almost like they intended it to be an overpatch. Um, so basically lay it over the, kind of like we got it, and just slap her on. Um, I'm doing a cutout, you know, kind of butt weld type patching. Um, you could make it work. You might have to section out a little bit in the middle because um, that's obviously sitting long um, versus it's sitting kind of where it's supposed to be over here. Um, so just kind of a heads up there as well if you happen to pick up those patch panels. Because the link can get you back in your home. Um, they may be intended to be a overweld kind of seam and just deal with the lip um, versus a true section in patch panel. Let's keep getting him nibbled away. So if I line him up there, I could use a bit of a beating with the hammer. Um, but that gives me my 45 to work from. And he's supposed to be coming from there. So if I had a square, I'd do square things. I don't know that I got anything good to work from here, though. Maybe that guy. Should get us in the ball part. So, we got our 45 nibbled out there. It does sit up pretty decently. Uh, took a marker, kind of marked that flange from the inside. And a rough mark down there, so it gives us an idea of what we can nibble out. Um, leave this lip here, we'll tack that on, cut that around. Should let us start to work it in and get a little better fitment. Um, right now you can't really get it perfectly, perfectly situated because of the, uh, you know, you're hitting on the metal on this end that has to be clearanced out. Um, but it's a start. We'll get that nibbled off and leave a little bit of wiggle room. We can bring it back with the flap disc. Uh, work our way around that corner and zing it all the way across. Well, I got a decent first pass nibbling that out. Um, I ended up just whacking this end right out. Um, trying to get it to fit in one go wasn't really playing real nice. There are some kind of dimensional quirks. I don't think it's actually the same height down here. Stand up, friend. The height like isn't quite the same end to end. Like when it, when it got pressed, there's just some weird stuff that we're going to have to beat with a hammer uh, that it wasn't worth trying to keep this ledge down here all the way across we'll just fill in this corner um, we'll get some body clamps in here to hold them and see how we're doing I don't know if these will fit 
It would be nice if they would. I actually need to use this little fella though. They've got these little screws on them um, to help offset the thickness. So this is the 16 gauge, this is the 18 gauge. You can use that screw uh, to help catch up on some of that offset. That is a, why does every school bus have squeaky brakes? <laughs> is that a requirement? how close we are. Feeling it's a little bit leveled out. Yep. Oop, need to sneeze again. Hmm. Yep. So that all needs to get shifted up. Well, let's clip her back in. See how it does. That's sitting pretty good. That's sitting flush. That's sitting flush. Sitting pretty decent. That radius is sitting pretty decent. That's sitting pretty decent. The one question mark of the day is how well does this so a bit of a new interesting dilemma. Um, when they bent the flange there, um, it's got a bit of a banana in it. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's a great way to show it. Um, but basically it's not straight all the way across, it's bowed out in the middle. Um, I'm going to have to beat on that with the hammer. I think we should be able to bring it around. Uh, that's one you're going to want straight because um, your rear outer skin is going to tie into it. If you've got a bow in there, you're going to have a bow in your door, kind of like we ran into with the passenger door. If your inner skin's off, your outer one's going to be garbage. Uh, garbage in, garbage out. Um, so we're going to have to get that guy straightened out. Um, I'm going to beat on it with a hammer a little bit, see if we can get it reasonable, and then we'll get her tucked back, back in our clamps. Be right back. Well, took it, put it over on the uh, kind of mini anvil there. Um, was able to get that kind of bent back straight. Um, it is soft enough metal that you can get that worked, um, but one of those things to catch before you put her all on. Um, looks like we are sitting pretty decent now between flange to flange. Um, sitting pretty decent on the distance here, distance here. I think I'm going to tack it in um, and then we can throw the door on and make sure that all our clearances are looking good. Well, with the door flipped back in, uh, we're sitting not, not too, too shabby. Um, it is a tight fit along that bottom edge. Um, we will need to nibble that back a little bit. That's easy enough to do. It is the inner flange. It doesn't have to be perfect. The outer one is the one that needs to get the kind of nice straight bead roll along the bottom. Um, we'll have to see a bit how we're sitting kind of in and out. Um, we can kind of work that through. But uh, all in all, sitting pretty close, sitting pretty square. Uh, pretty happy with that so far. We can Hit that part with the blaster. You can see a little bit of the surface scale still sitting in there. And we can tack the rest of that home and then we'll test fit it one more time. One last check uh, before I sent that home. You can kind of run a square down this fella. Um, so you can kind of see how that sheet metal is going to continue on down. This wasn't tacked yet so it gave you some wiggle room to work that to where you need it. Uh, so now it's sitting pretty good. Um, if anything, it's a little bit snug. I can kind of crank that back just a little bit. Um, 
but it at least gives us a consistent face to run down. Uh, so one of those ones before you really bring that in, make sure. Uh, but all in all, we're sitting pretty good there. Um, that'll give us something to work against for this skin. Well, got the inner inner done on this passenger side door. Not too bad. I uh, got a flange all the way around now. Uh, gave it a shot of etch primer up kind of in between last night to let her dry. Today's a new day. Uh, I am going to have to nibble this. Oops, there we go. This flange is a little bit long on this side, which isn't entirely unexpected. Um, you're going to have to give it a little bit of a nibble to give it some clearance. Uh, so when you fold that outer skin around it, um, you've got clearance to clear the tub. We're not too bad on this side. Uh, there's probably an eighth inch, but it narrows down as we go over. So I just took a fat uh, permanent marker, ran it down, give me a line. Um, they kind of have, you can see a little bit, there's some black Sharpie marker. And then as you come this way, it kind of disappears because you got clearance on this end. Um, so we'll nibble that off with the uh, flap wheel uh, just to give us clearance. You got wiggle room there because when you fold it around that, that pinch seam covers everything up. Uh, so it's better to have it pulled back a little bit than too tight because then you'll have doors that won't close. Uh, so we're going to pull that off, start working on those skins. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to nibble these off. I uh, get us a, a piece that has what we need. And uh, we'll work from there. Gonna cheat a little bit, use the uh, panel flanger just to get a good even line across. Conveniently, it's about the same size as a uh, the pinch roll um, on these panels, so it actually works pretty good that way. Uh, provided you've got a straight edge to work from it uh, it helps um, even if you've got a little break um, it probably wouldn't hurt to give you a good straight line across uh, a good even cut uh, provides kind of a natural weak point to bring it on around zoink so basically that just gave me a nice clean roll along there um, it's consistent distance um, gives you a little bit of a radius to work from to start with. We can roll that edge over. Uh, it should give us a little bit of a, a clearance in there too to fit that other piece of steel. Um, but there you can probably see a little bit better. Depends in the light. Um, but yeah, it just gives you a nice little bead. Um, like I say, it's not the intended use of the tool, but it's kind of a little bit of a cheater. straight little bend. If we need to, we can nibble a little of that flange off if it's nice and straight. The panel joiner tool gave us kind of a nice radius around there that kind of runs straight along that edge. Uh, we'll have to nibble it, do the same thing on each side. Those are a little shorter, they're a little easier. Um, but uh, let's go see what we get. I'm going to probably start with this side, fold this one over, but then we got material to work with. We're going to have to meet up here. From there we can settle things in and then the last piece which is the easiest to bend is this little shorty he's not real long at all he's only about an inch so got to nibble that corner back and then we can get that rolled on over otherwise came out nice and straight obviously it'll sit on there with the lip And we'll have to work out where it wants to sit on the door, make sure it's straight and square, of course. So I've got to nibble that guy back a little bit. Probably need to bring him back even a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. 
And if we straighten them back out. This guy will need a relief cut the other way so he can fall down. So kind of like uh, origami or wrapping a present, uh, i got to nibble those corners back so this this piece can now fold over, meet up, kind of like they got uh, this little fella. Um, so you can see they nibbled the corners out so they, they clear up each other. Got to do the same thing. Okay, going to go hammer this guy back on the uh, metal brake. We'll be right back. Well, after a little bit of... Hammering in the uh, cutting dies over there. Got a nice square square line up the side. Uh, corners kind of nice and tucked. And we got a flange that we can kind of work that metal behind. So we got a good start, at least on the right side. If we get some of the junk out of the way. Start to work that in as far as what it needs. Um, so doors are back on, sitting pretty square. If we set the patch panel on, you can see it's sitting a little bit long. If we bring it up just a smidge, should actually be pretty decent, which is basically that original line that I had there. So we'll nibble a little bit more off, see how we're doing. So I had to go back and forth a little bit, but uh, with a little bit of nibbling, Kind of on both. Uh, I get her to sit up there. It's kind of hard with one the one-handed filming curse. Um, sitting up pretty nice there. Sitting pretty nice flush on that end. Come down. We got a nice clean, pretty even reveal down there. I'm kind of holding it in place. Uh, but as we bring it up to the top and out to where it should be, there's the door sitting. Sitting pretty darn nice. So we can start to measure down and uh, it stays. We can cut that 45, bring that across, and then we can find our dimension here, bring that across. And then the last bit is just to find this uh, radius at the end and bring her around. It's a nice short little piece, so it uh, should be pretty easy to work it in. Then we should have this one door pretty close to buttoned up. So if we tuck this guy in, we know the height is sitting pretty good. And we can get it sitting nice and flush on that corner, which gives us that meeting point of that 45 that goes this way. And we know we got it square. So we can use our carpenter square here to give us a line up to that 45. And we want to kind of cut everything above that line. Uh, but we do need to know how far to go. Uh, but it is a known, known distance. Um, so if we grab a tape and measure that off, or really um, The other kind of cheater trick is if you got anything that you could just mark, it would give you that length. Now you can kind of translate it over. My tape measure is off somewhere and it's going to be a hard one to get a mark on anyway. So that should give us our mark as far as how to far to bring that guy down. And like everything else, we'll uh, kind of walk our way into it. Um, but once we get that mark, actually, that should give us our pretty easy vertical height all the way across. Um, should be pretty square. Um, and we can just bring that cut all the way across on this guy. So that's actually pretty good for where our mark starts there. It's actually sitting pretty good, sitting down straight, sitting down straight, coming across pretty straight. Ideally, I should be able to mark 
this guy on the back of my head. This one might work. Put a mark on the back. That tells me how much above I can cut. In theory, you should be able to nibble that um, and then connect the two dots um, and get a good decent straight line across there. It should be pretty close, at least enough of a panel gap because uh, you need a little gap anyway when you weld it. Um, so let's go connect those dots. So I got her tucked in there with the, uh, the old welding magnets. Um, unfortunately, can't use the panel clamps um, because of the both the shape and the fact that it's an enclosed space. You could probably get away with some Clecos. I don't have those. I should order up a pair of those or a set. Reminder for the evening. Um, but anyway, in the meantime, uh, grab the ye old panel gap measuring tool, aka uh, four millimeter Allen key. Um, you can just tuck it under there. It gives you a good idea of the, the gap I've got. It is just a little bit snugger in the middle, um, just by a whiff. Um, but as you get back down here again, that four mil fits. Um, so I'll look and see if I can bring this up just a smidge. Um, we can take a little bit off of there. But in general, it's a pretty good panel gap. It's about the same four mil down this, this side. Um, and the top corner is about the same. It is a little bit wider in the middle. I think there's kind of a little bit of a bow in the door. Uh, but in general, we're in the ballpark. If anything, we could bring the door up just a smidge, uh, which would give us just a little extra on the bottom. So we've got some wiggle room there. Uh, things are looking generally pretty good. If you measure up from the top and the bottom, it almost seems like there is a little bit of uh, extra length on this side, maybe a 16th. Uh, but in general, with the way the door is sitting and everything, I think we're going to basically leave it as it sits. Um, like I say, I do need to take a little bit of a whiff off in here just to bring up and get a little bit of that kind of consistent clearance. But in general, feeling pretty good. Uh, from there, we can then uh, mark this corner, get that flange bent, um, and then we should be able to start tacking it in and we will have one good door. So got that guy trimmed off. It's uh, got a flange wrapped around, kind of nibbled in the corners. Sitting pretty even here. It's just kind of floating, so it wants to droop when I don't have two hands. Uh, but measured up top to bottom, um, it's just a skosh under 40, 40 and a quarter. I think it's 40. Um, basically 40 and 3 sixteenths on uh, both sides. So we're looking pretty straight and square that way. Um, it's going to be a little interesting getting these to sit flush. Uh, I'm going to have to kind of work that with the welder. Um, small panel, so not too, too worried there. Pretty stiff. It's got some shape to it. Uh, but we'll have to tack it in the middle, get that sitting flush, and work our way out. Ooh. Ah, chew! Those trees, they're not being nice. Um, but we should be able to get that tacked in, work it in. It's nice and flush this side as well. Um, got a nice line coming around the corner, got a nice panel gap on the bottom, got a nice line coming up this side, so feeling pretty good. Next up, going to fire up the welder. Probably going to stitch it in in place, um, just again to make sure everything's nice and hunky-dory. Um, and then once it's tucked in, we can pull the door back off, throw it on the, the little rolling bench over there, finish the welding and fold those flanges over and get it, get it tucked in nice and tight. So I'm going to go set up the welder and we're going to slowly kind of nibble these in and get it, get it in place. Uh, we're... Look out fellas. Well, there 
it is all stitched in. Visit to the doctor. Um, bottom's still pretty decent. Uh, sitting pretty good along that side. And that corner ended up pretty good. Um, so all in all, not too bad. It's going to be stable. And if we open her up, uh, we can see we've got to beat these flanges back down where they're supposed to be. Uh, we've got nice good coverage, nice clearance. Corners should meet up nice. They'll get a little spot weld in the corner just to tighten things up. Um, and I'll probably hit this all with seam sealer just to tighten everything up and keep those gaps from getting junk in them. But all in all, looking more like a door again. So let's pull this off the rig, put it on the bench, start tacking that back together, and then we'll start working those flanges back across. Well, a little bit of finishing work left to do, but otherwise, that's all tacked in, welded, ground. Um, it's gonna, like everything else, gonna need a you know a little bit of leveling filler um, just to catch you know some of the welding. Otherwise, sitting pretty good, um, sitting pretty square. Corners are pretty nice. Um, I ended up just using a piece of scrap. I think it was eighth um, against that dolly block to get these pinches punched around but otherwise those cleaned up pretty well inners looking pretty good so other than a little bit of final sandblasting and finishing work i think we have one happy rear door on to the other side should go a little faster um, we kind of know what we're going to run into my guess says we'll end up making the outer skin again and using what we can from the inner but we'll see as we nibble into it we'll probably fast forward a little bit of it anything interesting we'll cut out to it uh, but it is a lot more of the same hopefully pretty soon we will have two rear doors and that is the last of the rest repair
that is a good day. Soon. So just a quick hitter before we dig in on this fella. Um, kind of similar. Rod it out about this far up through that pinch on the uh, hinge side. Uh, comes down kind of the same. Uh, just this bottom flange didn't get up into the taper. Um, kind of similar, one little pinhole there that it got pockmarked. Uh, kind of same on this side, does, does run up a little bit. It uh, gets a little interesting here, um, as I think we mentioned earlier. Um, it's not another pinch uh, fold seam here. It's, it does have a, a bit of a shape to it. Uh, it's kind of similar to the hard top side, so getting that bent I'm not too worried about. Uh, we are going to have to nibble out around here as well. You can see it's blown out behind that pinch weld. And if we flip that guy over, uh, kind of similar to the other side, this corner is blown out pretty weird, which is the main part I wanted from the patch panel because um, I didn't really have great references as to what this should be. Um, not terrible along the bottom, so we might actually be able to just seam in an L piece there. Um, so it might be a little more selective on this back, um, which would be good. Um, and then we kind of have to wrap around this corner. But uh, like I say, what we might end up doing is just pilfering this corner and sectioning that in, kind of come up here go around, get this corner plate in the right spot, um, and then nibble this off, and then nibble this off, and then we don't have to deal with this corner again either. So similar to the passenger side door, if we can keep this factory press, all the better. It's a little bit more defined of a shape than the aftermarkets. Um, and then anything we can do to get in here and get behind this pinch, put a new flange back in, so then we put the base back on. We'll be ready to rock. Um, so kind of like the other side, same deal. We're going to nibble away, keep cutting back, cutting back, get access to what we need, hit it with the blaster, and then start rebuilding the back. And then we'll throw the front skin back on, weld it, grind it, and then we'll do the final blasting, get it back on the car. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have two, two rear doors. Uh, we're going to zip through it a little bit faster. Uh, but we'll bring you along for the ride. Well, let's get to it. One quick little nugget before we really jump in. There is a bolt hole here and a bolt hole here. And the square goes from here to here. Um, you can kind of see them on the patch panel. So there's two bolt holes and then there's a flange or a recess hole. Um, I'm just going to run some lines up so we've got some reference marks again. Um, it is just kind of handy to have have some information documented in some way, shape, or form before you go to town and uh, have to re-figure out what you got.
So we've got this uh, patch panel all bent up. Um, got the lipper on the bottom. Got the lip matching on this side. Lines up pretty good. Um, and then we still got our step on this side. Got to get everything kind of in a happy place. And I think we're there. Um, I did throw it back on the chassis. Um, if you leave just a little bit of a gap like you would for a butt weld, um, it's even with the other door. And we've got an even, along, even seam along the bottom. So I think we're going to fire up the welder, tack it in place, and then throw it back on. Uh, the fun part on getting this is getting the uh, this direction it wants to tip a little bit uh, based on just kind of getting it to fit with that lower flange and all that kind of stuff. So I do need to nibble a little bit out of that guy. Uh, we'll work that fitment and then zap it there and see, see how she fits. Alrighty, just got a couple couple small tacks on here just in case I needed to pull it back off. Uh, Threw the door back on the, on the chassis. I uh, got a pretty good straight line coming down this side. The roll matches up pretty good. We'll be able to roll that over. A little bit of a wide gap here. Um, we'll see how she welds. I may need to put a piece of filler in there. That was just kind of the, the nature of working on the panel. Uh, I was a little bit off on the cup there. Uh, down on the bottom, Pretty good, consistent uh, door gap there, at least for uh, FJ40. Uh, we're pretty good up and down. Our seams match here. Corners are pretty close here. Um, not perfect, but um, the top is a little bit lower here too. You can kind of kick those doors just a little bit. But all in all, that's looking pretty good. And if we crack open the door, this will carry on down like it's supposed to. And we'll figure out what we need to do underneath. Uh, we got to seam that all together. Uh, but all in all, that's looking pretty good. Uh, so <laughs> door's got to come back off yet again. Uh, throw her back on the bench. We'll keep. We'll do the typical tack, tack and grind. Um, and then last bit, we've just got to trim this flange and add this rolled over lip. Uh, if I get out of the way, uh, you might get a little better view there. This needs to carry on down. And we can just tuck that on the back of this. We got a seam in that last little baby piece. So let's get the door back off and let's get her sewn up. Well, got her all seamed in. Fits pretty good in the rig. Uh, got the side corners all tucked around. I'm not exactly sure exactly how they transition this corner here. I left a little bit of a tab. Just gives it a little bit of support. Uh, it does clear the, the lip on the tub. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. Just helps support that back. I think it's actually cut out on a factory rig. Um, but as long as it fits, it fits. If it fits, it sits. Um, otherwise, it's got the back all tucked in as well. Pretty good there. Got all these folds pretty good. Uh, so i uh, going to get out the portable blaster. Uh, just give it a quick whiff with the grit. Um, just knock off some of the welding splatter and things like that and just clean it up. Um, it's nice to have a good clean surface before you go into paint and prime. Uh, but otherwise, this door is looking pretty good. The other is looking pretty good. I'll pull that one off as well, blast it, um, get them all nice and clean, throw them back on the rig for one last check. And then theoretically, that's the end of the metal. But uh, let's get them cleaned up first and see if we've got any gotchas. Well, I got them all cleaned up. Both doors welded, sanded, ground, re-sandblasted just to get the crust off. Um, all in all, it turned out pretty good. There's a few little quirks here and there that I'll have to work as I do the bodywork. Um, there's a little bit of a dimple there, or a you know, little bit of a, a cut. Um, seam across the bottom turned out pretty good. Um, this corner came over just a smidge. Um, but all in all, pretty solid. There is a, uh, from what I gather, a packing, like a rubber packing that goes down in this corner because of the uh, latch mechanism that sits here. Uh, but all in all, this comes across nice and square. Uh, sits pretty well up the tub, around the top. Uh, we're sitting pretty good, pretty even. And that seam sits pretty good. Um, we line up with our hard top panels. So left and right sits pretty good there. For whatever reason, there's a little bit more of a reveal on this side. Um, my guess says it's just a quirk of the tub. 
Um, again, there is a, there's like a rubber weather stripping that sits on top of this little, this little rail. Um, so not too worried about that. Uh, the spare tire sits right in this area as well, which um, kind of takes away some of the visuals. Um, so the back's kind of an interesting one. Otherwise, pretty happy there. Uh, if you crack them open, um, inners came out pretty good. Um, we got that pinch, pinch all the way around. Uh, this is all that factory corner we kept. Ha pretty happy that we kept that. Um, it's just kind of a nicer, a nicer pressing than the aftermarkets. Um, this is the aftermarket one. Pretty close. Um, you can't see it quite as much anyway because it's the inner one. Um, that's all right. There's a little bit of, you know, weld remnants there. Um, by the time you do like a leveling compound and then a, a surfacer, that'll be good as new. Um, if you pop open this fella, same deal. Nice and clean on the inners. Uh, this, this one we did keep the factory pressings, um, so that corner is all original other than this lip, this far lip on the corner. Um, folds came out pretty good, pretty clean across the bottom. Our latch panel that we patched in sits pretty good. Uh, kind of like other places, there is a little bit of cut back here and there from the wells, and there's a little bit of a just a little pocket in that flange where it met that it'll need a little bit of filler. Um, but all in all, that turned out pretty good. Um, we got that goofy double step. Um, it's kind of a finicky part to make and get exactly right. It does sit in just a smidge here. I don't know if I've got anything that shows it real well. Um, you can see a little bit when you close that door um, that they just kind of real minorly wander away from each other. Um, this one tucked in a little bit, and this one tucked in a little bit. Uh, but all in all, not too bad. But uh, that is a clean half of the cruiser. And uh, realistically, that is the end of patchwork. So hard tops are done. Doors are done. Tub is mated to the cowl and firewall. I do need to grind and finish that floor pan. Um, we'll do that once the tub is off. That's pretty minor. Um, otherwise, windshield is patched up. Front bib is all patched up. Uh, frame has all been patched. That's a whole other story. Um, Fenders are good. I do need to touch up these uh, bolt holes where the the bib didn't meet up with the fenders just right. That's pretty minor. We'll do that when we pull the fenders off the last time. Cowl's all been patched. Better view of the windshield. That's all snug and ready to go. Doors have been warped and wobbled and fixed. So pretty good there. Um, one minor nugget. I got to clearance this hinge a little bit. The bolt holes are off. Uh, so if you want the door to sit right. Uh, you need a little bit of extra room for the bolts. That's nothing major. Um, so yeah, pretty good there. Um, there's that tub floor that we got to finish. I uh, got to degrease and clean up the trans tunnel. There's a good example of the factory paint that hasn't been touched. So that is the factory Cygnus White uh, that they ran in 76, 75. Um, so that's probably the color we're going back with. Um, it's just kind of that off-white. Um, I'll probably do, I'll probably do that to keep her original. Um, but all the way, all the, all in all, back around the back, and there we are. So Moses, that was a lot of work, but we've got a rust-free cruiser. That's a lot of scrap. <laughs>